What's up, Barefoot Nation? Today, we're actually not doing anything outdoors. We're going indoors for a houseplant tour. Let's go! All right, guys, so I'm gonna start off in the family room, and this is pretty much the best room in the house for houseplants. This window faces east, this window faces south, and then there's two skylights up here. So this is a fantastically bright room, absolutely perfect for growing plants. So this is my little uh, tracky carpus uh, Bulgaria windmill palm. This, if you guys saw my video in May, the uh, Plant Delights haul, uh, you will have seen this guy. Um, he's grown uh, a little bit. I mean, I've kind of kept it fairly root bound. I've actually had this in my garage most of the winter, but uh, it has, uh, we have some single digit lows that the garage is not really insulated. So it, um, it'll probably get too cold and Given that this guy's from North Carolina, I don't want to give it too much cold right away. Another cute little plant that I've had for quite a while is this Diefenbachia. This is a plant that uh, is very poisonous, so um, <laughs> if you let your kids or dogs eat plants, uh, don't let them eat this This one. is one of my beautiful red Abyssinian bananas, or Enset Morelli. And I absolutely love this plant. I didn't really intend to have it as a house plant, but I had it in the basement uh, where I thought it was cool enough. Bananas and Enset all only have about two or three leaves indoors. I cut down on water a lot with these guys. They, uh, it's really easy to rot the corn just because they don't, they don't have that active growth rate indoors. I absolutely love this plant. Another plant that gets a lot less water indoors is uh, this Strelitzia nicoli, or a white bird of paradise. Now, I actually grew this plant in the ground for the summer. Uh, I find that they don't tend to mind being dug and replanted, and having them in the ground for, for a summer is actually going to root prune your plants. Bird of paradise have a tendency to bust pots open just because their roots are so strong. So having them in the ground every few years or every year is a great way to keep those roots under control. I absolutely love this plant. And another cool thing that's happened and while since it's been inside really is it's made pups and not just one, but three of them. That it's just an amazing thought to me that even indoors getting dug up and planted and not being in the tropics that it still does all that stuff. I don't know, I'm just fascinated by it and it's cute. They're wonderful little plants. Uh, I wouldn't try to divide these off for quite a while because, if at all, because they're too close to the mother plant. But I mean, if it was getting to be where there is a rhizome neck and it was out here, give or take, then maybe you could try dividing it once it was big enough. You can see a couple of the fronds right here. But this is my beautiful areca palm and uh, this guy I've had for about three years now again this guy goes outside for the summer and uh, I love having the palm fronds arch over the chair right there here's a typical monstera but I actually keep this plant short and last spring I cut this plant back and had it out in the sun to regrow and now it's uh, looking nice and full again so here we're in the dining room and the window you're looking at right now is a south-facing window. And on the other side is a north-facing window. So this room is essentially like a breezeway. This is my uh, Chinese fan palm, one of my favorite plants. This is another plant that I grew in the ground for the summer. I love the fronds on this guy and how big they're getting. So when they're young, Chinese fan palms actually like a little bit of shade. And as they get older, as they develop a trunk, they uh, appreciate sun. So uh, this guy not only is in full shade during the growing season, um, but also in the house, although this uh, is a rather bright room, it still doesn't really get any direct or very, very little direct sun. So I got palms. There's my table where I do a lot of studying. A little bit messy, but hey. Here is a gorgeous lady palm and as you can tell I have forgotten to water it a few times which explains the brown tips. And then I've got a little Manjula pothos at the base. 
So uh, I'm a big fan of doing combination planters with house plants because why not? You know, we do it with our pots in the summertime and it just brings a little bit of almost like a summer feeling to your house plants. This is again rather close to the south window which the lady palm is taking relatively well. It gets very bright light and is, as you can see the new fronds that it's putting out are, are pretty decent sized. This guy is a very happy plant. But given how slow growing they are, I don't take this plant outside until at least Memorial Day when the trees and all the shrubs have completely leafed out just so that it has the shade that it needs. So there you can see the two palms I just showed you. Now swinging around this way in the living room, this is actually a rare palm. It's called uh, Camadoria Hooperiana. So it's related to the uh, parlor palm, but because it's a Camadoria, it'll take a little bit more shade. So again, it's got good light, good diffused light, but it's not exactly um, getting any direct sun. I don't give any of my plants as much water indoors as I do give them outdoors. And of course, from the stairs, it just absolutely graces the, uh, the steps. Another gorgeous grouping of plants here is uh, on this North Bay window here. Shoved up in the corner here, I've got a uh, philodendron, or now recently reclassified those darned uh, taxonomists, to Thomatophyllum. <laughs> Try to say that five times fast. I mean, come on, what are these guys thinking? But um, uh, Thomatophyllum, or philodendron, bipinidifidum... You guys know what I'm talking about. Salome, that's his name. This is right up against the north window, getting it as much light as I can in this case. Uh, I chopped off, <laughs> God only knows how much of the root system when I dug it out of the ground in fall, but uh, it's a philodendron and you know, they'll forgive you. Very, very forgiving plants, the, the Salome. Wonderful beginner plant. Um, and if you give them good light, even a bit of sun, for a few hours, which is uh, contradictory, they will uh, not be quite so leggy for you. In the middle there, you can see I have a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous variegated peace lily with uh, a bloom coming, which is awesome. And then, uh, and the peace lily, now these variegateds, I would recommend not growing them in the same environment as you would a typical peace lily, mainly because of the variegation. I tend to think that they would want a little bit more light, but then again, this plant is going to go outside for the summer in deep shade, so although I've had it for a little while, it's just, it's, uh, I guess you could say slightly more finicky than a regular peace lily. In my opinion, variegated peace lilies are absolutely worth that extra little bit of finickiness because they're so beautiful. I mean, I am truly a sucker for variegation, though. Um, but in addition to the variegation, you can see it particularly on the older leaves, how they get like this kind of texturing to them. I'm not sure exactly how you would describe that, but nevertheless, between the uh, flecking, and it's actually a very similar pattern to the Monstera Albo Borzigiana. The only difference being is I don't think the Monstera has the texturing on the leaves as this guy does. So the cultivar for this is a Spotophyllum um, Domino, I believe it is. And then the last plant you can see here is a beautiful Philodendron Davidsonii. Um, these actually came into the nursery as a red Congo, but clearly they're not. And clearly you can see that they're related. I actually tend to like the Davidsonii a little better. They can, it seems, tolerate a little bit less light than the red Congo because it's just a green leaf plant. So this is, uh, I don't always put this guy outside for the summer, but if I do put them outside, it's generally going to be later in the season, like in late May or early June, just because I don't like to give them any cold whatsoever. Uh, basically for both of these, the peace lily that you can see in the background, as well as this Davidsonia. The, uh, Salome, I actually do let that guy get a little bit, um... Just a couple degrees above frost, actually. Here's this combination from the other side. You can see how they just kind of blend in to each other. It's absolutely beautiful. But uh, they all have uh, decent sized trays for humidity. 
the best one of the best ways to raise the humidity around your house plants if they're low to the ground not for a palm tree is to um is to have a pebble tray and what a pebble tray is going to do is your plant is sitting on top of the rocks so that the the holes are not going to be sucking in water so then it, the water would just then evaporate I actually almost forgot to show you guys this unbelievable Christmas palm. I keep this Christmas palm in the bathroom right next to the shower because, I'm, and I know it looks crunched in and it absolutely is, but I keep this guy in here because of the uh, slightly elevated humidity and there is a skylight in this in this room. Besides the fact that this is really cool, I think, to have a palm in the shower, you can see right, not in the shower, but you know, within visual, it feels like it is. <laughs> um, you can see that this is a new frond that it's put out since it's been indoors, uh, which is just phenomenal to see because that means obviously it's growing and that it's happy. I love that trunking habit on it and they do produce rings relatively fast. If you keep them happy, they'll grow quite a bit. Now, this would be considered by many to be a pencil trunk Christmas palm. And basically what that is, is it doesn't have the thick uh, stems as uh, the ones like down in Florida do. Also at the base of this Christmas palm, you can see another Alocasia gajana. This is that California elephant ear. I just kind of like shoved it in the corner. And so this, <laughs> this pot's gotta be absolutely positively full of roots, but um, I actually might plant this in the ground somewhere in the garden next year just because it, um, or in the years coming because it's just so full of roots. It would be really interesting to see how it would do. So here's another south facing uh, room and as expected, this is a bedroom in this case. As you can see here, I've got a, a little spindle palm, just a little one. <laughs> um, this plant is an absolutely gorgeous palm. I think it's a little tougher than say like a Christmas palm. You still kind of get those wider um, leaflets, but it's uh, a little more tolerant of uh, lower humidity. Um, the only thing that I want to figure out, and hopefully you guys can tell me down in the comments, is those sheaths don't seem to want to fall off. I wonder if I have to cut them off as I've done there, but then it looks like crap. So. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think or how you would remove a spindle palm sheath, whether it's just cutting it off at the base really close or if they fall off naturally. The next plant that's super evident here is the stromanthi. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, I've got a seed grown Enset ventricosum right here. This guy decided to sprout in like August. I mean, it was super late. Um, but this is actually out of the 10 seeds that I bought off Amazon. This is the only one that, uh, or I got one, but it damped off that germinated. So, but now that it's been growing for a while and I had it under the lights for a while and on a heat mat, not here, but, um, now that it has been, it's just been absolutely wonderful to have as a house plant. Yes, it does get spider mites. Generally when a leaf gets too bad, I'll just cut that off and, and, uh, compost it. Absolutely wonderful plant and I love that contrast right there between the tropical palms and bananas and those uh, naked deciduous trees out there. Here you can see a little uh, tricolor stromanthi. Um, this guy is uh, planted in with the palm. Stromanthes are pretty low care, easy to care for plants and it just gives that a little pop of color. I have uh, at the base, I'll do, uh, I think, wax begonias next year. I had impatience in here last year. Right here, guys, check this out. This is unbelievable, but super, super exciting for me. I am so excited to show you guys these Musa Velutina. These are second generation uh, seeds. I actually grew a Musa Velutina seed that I bought off of Amazon. They originally came from Hawaii. Uh, I started them... Uh, Jeez, it's got to be about two years at this point, so uh, winter time, and um, had them, grew it on and planted it out, and then last summer, that Musa Velutina, which I will insert a picture. Fruited and made seed. Um, so now this is the second generation of Musa Velutina. In this, it's, so now they're contained in a 10 gallon 
aquarium, but uh, before I, I had a tray, a lid over that, and just today I pulled it off be because the seedlings were starting to outgrow it. You can see I generally put two in per cell, but what's absolutely incredible about this batch of seed is that it's close to a 100% germination rate, which absolutely was not the case with the 20 or so seeds that I got off Amazon. I really only got a few, maybe six good plants out of the 20. Um, I guess that has something to do with the freshness of seed, but um, I am so excited to grow these out. I'm going to have them in a mass planting, I think. So here you guys can see this little anthurium. This is just a typical red flowering anthurium uh, in a cool modern um, stone or brick looking planter. I like this little plant. Everyone's got all these fancy anthuriums and I'm getting there. I'm, I'm gonna buy one eventually. But uh, I don't know, man. There's just something that's, that simplicity of uh, just the red, and this is a faded flower. But the simplicity of just red anthurium, it just says tropical to me. I absolutely love them. And I'm sure by now you've noticed the all that water condensation on the seed tray. I've got uh, seeds from my cannas that I grew. Not Well, they were from seed originally. But these guys I bought as uh, gallon size plants. And this is mid-February, so we there's a lot of time yet before they get planted out for the summer. And I just have a couple plants here in my bedroom. I've got a couple tanks, nice little fish tank and and uh, my turtle. But uh, as far as the plants go, um, pretty simple. Just a, another, um, this pothos is a pearls and jade. And then just a little uh, lucky bamboo in a little container that's really too small and it needs water all the time. I've heard that in Japanese culture they don't want house plants or plants in the bedroom because the activity is not zen. Um, I've heard, I don't know, I can't confirm that, but uh, even if that's the case I at least gotta have a few nice little plants in the room. This is a north facing window so I'm pretty limited as far as what will actually grow happily so you know, the pothos and the lucky bamboo are pretty much the, um, the go-to plants there. And the last house plant that I have to show you guys is this big peace lily. I'm not sure what cultivar it is. I do know that there are multiple cultivars of uh, peace lily. I actually got this guy from Lowe's a few years back. And uh, that's how I ended up with my pet tree frog. <laughs> Believe it or not, there was uh, I was deciding between two peace lilies. And he, this, it's obviously not with that exact frond, but he, the tree frog was sitting way down here in this little cupped portion of the stem. And obviously I picked uh, this plant because there was a frog in it. All right, y'all. That's all that I have for you for this February, basically March, but I'm still calling it a February tour because that's when it was filmed, house plant tour. If you liked this video, be sure to drop it a big ol' thumbs up. If you want to see more content just like this, whether it's water features or plants, tropicals, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell so that you, so that you guys know exactly when I post a new video. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I can't wait to see you on the next one. Peace! <laughs>